Get closer. Spinning move. Do your fitness spinning move that you almost fell down This is his small <laughs> cop routine. <laughs> He's ballet like on a hoverboard. Like on his bed, 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 Jesus, take my life! Jesus, take my life! Do that thing you used to do. Back up, I can't get you all in here. Back up. Do that. Put it in reverse, Terry! Put it in reverse, Terry. Terry! Put it in reverse, What you do, Terry? Will you do it? Put your, 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 Do you what you want to do? Uh, there's no walk, Mac. There's no walk. Mac, there's no walk. Oh, Mac, you're found to run over his toes. You make a great dancer. I can do a mole call with a one wheel. One wheels are basically. Mac, do that thing you were doing, but do it to the side so I can see you leaning forward and stuff. That. Oh, yeah. Really? That kind of puts me to sleep when you do that. And their battery lasts like eight hours. Like, how long does this battery last? About two hours. And they explode. No, they don't. Not this one. You need to include a starburst. You need to include a starburst in your choreography, like. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. More arms. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I need a grand finale here. Okay, you can bow now. Bow. No way, but he was scared to do it. <laughs> Fabulous. Everybody clap. I need applause. Oh! Oh my gosh! That's do actually it, good again. Wow. Excuse me, Mom. Here, let me get the dog short. With his shawty shocks. Backwards, no doubt. Face plant, face plant. Oh, he's gonna fall. Oh, he's gonna Did I do a fashion in that? No, I did a white belt. Oh, no. Oh, I'm gonna have the. I got the better footwork. Nah. Oh, yeah? His footwork. You're shaking. It's pretty good, though. It's pretty good, though. Max smooth. He's, he's faster. Max got the smoothie. So. Okay. Hang on, I don't know what to do. I'll get the chunk of Can you moonwalk? Huh? Can you move up? Come and drift it. Did you make black marks on my floor? I Wait, Mac, was that you that um, got on the dirt bike and rode it all over and like, got black marks all over my um, concrete? Mm -hmm. Mac, Mac got on our dirt bike. He, he squealed out on the concrete and like tons of black marks. Black marks, come on, that's going here. No, I just, I just well, you better clean them up. I know, Liam had to sit I'll clean there. Up. Mate, Liam couldn't okay, get that, that stain out for two hours. It would not come out. He kept on trying everything. This is why they have been outlawed. Clean it up and go. Clean that's up. Mom, that's why.
Hey guys, welcome to Dirt Road Believer. I am Tina and I'm so glad you chose to spend a little time out of your day with me today for today's devotion. I tried my best to come up with some sort of transition from Max Mall Cop routine into my devotional today, but I'm sorry, I just, I have no segue. Sorry, I couldn't resist that bad joke, <clears throat> but you will forgive me and we will move on. Um, my devotion today is called Get Greasy, and what we're talking about is the anointing of the Lord. And we're going to hop right into, this is Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to read the parable of the ten virgins. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready uh, went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others came, Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Oil represents the anointing. And the wise virgins had oil for their lamps, oil to spare. And the virgins who were foolish did not prepare and did not have the oil. When we talk about the anointing of the Lord, there is no like drive-through um, quick way of getting anointing. It is all about the time that you spend with the Lord. And um, the anointing that we're talking about is time in the Word and time, quiet time spent with God. I know everyone wants the anointing, wants the um, influence and the, the benefits that come along with having the anointing of the Lord, but getting there is a process and getting there takes time. Um, we can't hope to borrow from someone else's anointing when the Lord comes. We can't hope to um, let someone else be watchful for us and then when the time comes and the Lord to return say Oh, can I borrow some of yours? It doesn't work that way We have got to get greasy in the anointing oil of the Lord and that we do that by abiding in him I shared with you last week that John is my favorite favorite apostle He's the one he always says the one whom Jesus loved the one whom Jesus loved. And that doesn't mean Jesus loved him any more than the other apostles. I think he felt that love very deeply. And he speaks many times in his writing about abiding. Let's, um, let's go over to John. This is chapter 15, verse 9, verse 7, excuse me. And it says, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. How do you know if someone is anointed? How do you know if someone is spending time in the Lord? It's because they bear fruit. If you have the anointing of the Lord, um, there's evidence of that. You're bearing fruit in your life. And that word abide, it means that you are stable, you are fixed, you continue in a place. So when we abide in God's love, we continue in the, I hate to use the word 
practice because you know I think sometimes Christians we don't want to we don't want to link words to our faith like practice and discipline and because that doesn't sound that doesn't sound too full of grace to us you know we want we want to um, believe and highlight the fact that oh well God has grace when we don't abide and God has grace when we fall out of our time of of being in the word or prayer and of course God has grace but as Christians if we are going to be watchful like the wise virgins then we have to fill our lamps with oil and filling our lamps is filling our minds and our hearts with the Word of God spending time I call it that secret place and I love that secret place because there God does amazing things he unveils mysteries mysteries God's mysteries he unveils them to you in that secret place and this month of September I told you it's all about worship and if we've gotten in our heads that worship is meant for one hour on Sunday and it's meant to do it's meant to be done with music and people around us and fellowshipping then we've got to rethink that because some of the most powerful and precious worship you will ever have is when you abide in the Lord and you meet him day after day after day and if you're not in the practice of doing that then it may sound like super boring to you like really Tina you you read the Bible every day and you pray every day yes and I look forward to it more than I do anything else and I know everyone has their different times that they um, they spend that time in the word or in prayer or um, my special time is early in the morning so I love setting the tone of my day, waking up, having the mind of Christ, knowing that I'm going to meet him first thing. Now, let's be real. I do meet the coffee pot on the way to Jesus, okay? Um, I do need a little <clears throat> at 4 a.m. every morning, but it is such a special time and I would not miss it. It's, it's not wise. Like, if we're like the ten virgins who were foolish, then we think, oh, well, I've got time. One day, you know, one day I'll get that oil that I've been meaning to get, and one day I'll make sure my lamps are good to go. Guys, there may not be later. We have to be watchful and aware now. And I mentioned to you last week um, that there would be a falling away. Second Thessalonians talks about a falling away from the body of Christ. And we see that happening even now. So being watchful, making sure that we're doing what it takes to be anointed. And guys, I promise when you get a taste of the anointing, you don't want it to end. You just want more and more and more. So now is the time to go deeper. And that's my prayer for all of my uh, viewers for Dirt Road Believer is that something, not that Tina has to say, but something in these devotionals causes you to, it causes an awakening. Uh, I want to dig deeper. I, want, I was so blessed last week when someone, a viewer messaged me and said, I just want to go deeper. And I said, well, then my prayers are being answered because I don't want us to wait and fall asleep and not be watchful like those virgins. I want us to get greasy. I want us to roll around in the Word of God and get in touch with that anointing and it just makes you want more and more and more and more. It brings out the best in what you already have. It also bring, calls out new things when you have the anointing. So, um, the song. I, I am getting to the song. This is probably one of the most personal songs that I have ever written because it's about my time with the Lord. It's about my 4 a.m. secret place where I meet Him every day. And um, I'm trying to think back to when I wrote this song. Um, God impressed upon me that whether I get myself out of bed at 4 a.m. or whether I sleep right through my alarm, he is waiting for me. 
He is waiting, and I don't care what time of the day your secret place is or your time in the Word is, He is waiting. And I have, I have just given myself that image in my head that where I sit, that recliner, that table next to me, Jesus is there and He is waiting for me. And so this song just speaks to my personal time as I abide and as I worship um, in that secret place. And so I hope it encourages you. And if you don't already have a time every single day that you are in the Word, it, you don't have to start out with hours and hours and start out with just something simple. I started with a five minute devotional called Girlfriends for God. And as, as God began to open up the scriptures to me, I just wanted to go deeper. So I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to sing this song for you because I'm getting a little wordy here. All right. I hope you enjoy this song. Oh, you. 
He's waiting for you. He has an appointment with you every day. Whether you're there or not, He makes that appointment. Will you make that appointment and abide in Him and receive the anointing that He has waiting for you? I'm praying for you guys. And until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.